Whether in terms of popularity, influence or money, it's worth about $50 billion in counting, it's safe to say that Star Wars is one of the most influential properties of all time. The TV shows, the games, the books and the many, 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 many pieces of plastic tat all tend to focus around the main series installments. These are the things that turned millions of kids worldwide into lightsaber-wielding maniacs. Mega fans will tell you that they know every single scene inside, outside, upside down, back in time, which to be fair is not something Star Wars has often done. But still, having said that, we bet we've got some things that they might not have seen. As with any film ever, there is so much footage filmed that never makes it to air and often turns up in things like gag reels, deleted scene reels and sometimes somebody just make off with it in the back of their car. Now these 10 scenes are just the tip of the cutting room iceberg. We know that there's so, so much more out there. With that in mind, I'm Sean Ferrick for What Culture Star Wars and here are 10 deleted Star Wars scenes you've never seen. Number 10. Anakin vs. Greedo, Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace. One of the longest and most furious debates in Star Wars history is that ultimate burning question, who shot first? The issue arose from a scene in the original Star Wars in 1977 that sees the green, prickly bounty hunter confront Han Solo in Mos Eisley. Now, fans at the time think, oh, there you go, Han shot first, nice and straightforward. But George Lucas then included a change in the special edition in the 90s that muddies that up. The furore was so over the top that a reference to this was added into Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. After a young Anakin Skywalker wins his pod race and is celebrating, a few minutes later, Qui-Gon Jinn finds the young boy having a scrap with another young child who happens to be none other than Greedo himself. The Rodian accuses Anakin of cheating in the race, which leads to the fisticuffs, which the Jedi breaks up. The real cherry on the cake is when Greedo's friends warn him afterwards, you shouldn't attack someone first. Number nine. Jer Jared's Spotlight, Star Wars Episode 6, Return of the Jedi. One of the great things about Star Wars is the size of the universe in which it exists. This means that any background character or extra may in fact have a massive story to tell interwoven in the massive tapestry of Star Wars. Unfortunately, the nature of film being what it is, there just isn't enough time to tell all of the stories for every Star Wars character that we'd like to. One member of the Empire who does receive a fair bit of screen time is Moff Jarjarad, who is the captain of the second Death Star in Return of the Jedi. He makes a handful of appearances in the theatrical cut, either to scold some workers or to be scolded by none other than Darth Vader. But there were plans to include more of him. In a few deleted scenes, he is first almost choked out by Darth Vader for refusing the latter access to the Emperor. And then there is a scene in which Emperor Palpatine orders him to destroy the moon of Endor should the shield fail, despite there being several Imperial battalions still on the surface. This scene in particular adds much more weight to the scene that show the Death Star almost about to fire because we know things are about to get pretty bad pretty fast. Number eight, Anakin Skywalker defends Ahsoka Tano, Star Wars, The Clone Wars. Star Wars, The Clone Wars, which ran from 2008 until 2020, charted the many battles that took place between the Republic and the Separatists during the titular Clone Wars. This filled in many gaps as to what the characters were up to between the main episodes two and three, and also introduced a lot of new faces to the roster as well. One of the most endearing and enduring new characters introduced is, of course, Ahsoka Tano. While she was Padawan to Anakin Skywalker, she is embroiled in the entire, well, I suppose, overpowering of the Jedis themselves. She is implicated in the bombing of the Jedi Temple. Thankfully, now although this scene didn't make it to air, her former master does stick up for her. In an uncompleted and a little bit frightening exchange, 
Skywalker speaks to what's left of the council and says that there's no way his Padawan had anything to do with the bombing. Now, Yoda later speaks to Anakin privately and says that while he believes him, he is going to have to provide more evidence to exonerate his young ward. This, of course, set the scene for what would become episode three. And it's nice to see Anakin go to bat for his young Padawan, especially when we know that Anakin's own turn not too long after this would lead to one of the darkest periods in the galactic history. Number seven, Sandstorm. Star Wars Episode VI, Return of the Jedi. Sadly, this is not a scene where Han, Luke, and Leia perform a cover of the classic Darude track. Be honest, you're all humming it right now. There's probably an AI version of it out there somewhere. I'm not saying where to look, just saying it's probably there. Instead, in this deleted scene, our heroes aboard the Millennium Falcon battle the elements on Tatooine alongside Lando, Chewie, and our favorite droids. The gang who have just rescued Han from Jabba the Hutt and that horrible Sarlacc pit, are all celebrating and think that they're all about to travel together. That is, until Luke reveals that he has his own mission that he's going to go and undertake, which of course we now know means going to see Yoda before his master dies. This was actually the very first thing filmed for Return of the Jedi, and it was cut because it was felt that it broke the flow of the movie. A few lines about Luke leaving were added to the scene where the X-Wing and Millennium Falcon make it to space, just so that it wouldn't be too confusing for our audience as to where the heck Luke was going. Number six, The Fall of Count Dooku, Star Wars Episode Two: Attack of the Clones. One of the much better things about the prequel trilogy was getting to see the legendary Christopher Lee in his natural habitat playing a campy bad guy. Lee's turn as Count Dooku in Star Wars Episode Two and Star Wars Episode Three led to a slew of appearances by the character in expanded media. But in the films themselves, very little is known about this character, save that he used to be a Jedi and was once mentor to Qui-Gon Jinn. Now that's not an awful lot to go at, especially when he is the main antagonist of the second film. That's where this little deleted scene's handy bit of exposition really helps. In the Jedi archives, Obi-Wan Kenobi is looking at a bust of Count Dooku when he's joined by head librarian Jo Kasten Nu. She then proceeds to fawn over Dooku, saying that he was one of the most gifted Jedi she had ever met. This scene goes to adding an awful lot of context to Dooku as a character, showing that he was a through and through Jedi until he gave up on the idea of the Republic. These ideas would ultimately be fleshed out in such novels as Master and Apprentice and Dooku Jedi Lost, Star Wars Tales of the Jedi, the animated series. In terms of bang, bang, boom, boom, it's not the most exciting conversation in the world, but more Jocasta is never a bad thing. Number five, Grievous kills Shaq T, Revenge of the Sith. Though he's made many, many subsequent appearances in the Star Wars franchise, General Grievous's appearances in the main films are limited to say the least. He appears in the very beginning of Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith, having just abducted Chancellor Palpatine, and is then tracked down by Obi-Wan Kenobi on Utapo, where he's killed. And that's it. I guess he you tapped out. This is hardly the most dignified exit as well for one of the coolest designed creatures in all of Star Wars. And especially not after his badass introduction in the Clone Wars series. Fans would have gotten to see his more ruthless side if this deleted scene had been left intact in the film. Obi-Wan and Anakin confront the general who is surrounded by his own personal guard and he is in possession of a Jedi prisoner, Shaq T. Unfortunately, T doesn't stick around for very long as she is almost immediately skewered by her own lightsaber. Thanks for dropping by though. Here's the funny thing. This is actually the first of three different scenes in which poor Shaq T meets her maker. In the second one, she's cut down by Anakin during Order 66. And in the third one, she's killed in the 2008 video game, Star Wars Force Unleashed. Number four, Han gets court-martialed, Solo, a Star Wars story. Disney had big plans for the 2018 prequel, Solo, A Star Wars Story, starring Alden Ehrenreich as the eponymous character, and it was gonna be a launch pad for a whole bunch of new anthology-focused films. We all know how that went. As is often the case, money talks, and sadly, this film bombed at the box office. Now, never mind. This film gave us an insight into the galaxy's most lovable ruffian, including how he met Lando Calrissian, played by the wonderful Donald Glover, which just makes me happy. It also reveals how he got his name, how he came in possession of the Millennium Falcon, and 
how he was court-martialed at the Imperial Academy. Now, there's just one thing about that. We haven't seen that scene, have we? The movie explains that Han was formally enrolled in and subsequently court-martialed out of the Imperial Academy for not following orders. The scene then depicts him narrowly avoiding death following a TIE fighter crash. In the next scene, Han is shown sporting a jaunty eye patch standing in front of the committee who elect to chuck him out on his posterior. This of course leads him to meet Tobias Beckett, his gang of criminals and some hairy bloke called Chewbacca. Number three, Padme's secret meeting, Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith. Padme Amidala once famously said, so this is how liberty dies, to thundering applause at the formation of the First Galactic Empire. With her having said that, you know she wasn't best pleased as to how things were turning out in the Republic. It turns out that her suspicions had existed long before this scene, as this deleted scene shows that she had discussions about her former senator long before this happened. In a scene cut that's called A Stirring in the Senate, we see Amidala meet with a bunch of other senators, including Bail Organa, who we know would go on to foster and raise Leia, and a young Mon Mothma, who we know from Return of the Jedi, but also a star of the Andor limited series. The gang discuss their fears over the growing power within the Senate, and particularly on the Empire, and ends with them asserting that no one can know of their suspicions, not even family. This was supposed to be the start of an entire subplot for Padme, but George Lucas decided that the film should focus more on Anakin's journey and therefore he cut it from the final cut. In doing so, he effectively removed what were the earliest days of the Rebel Alliance. Number two, Kylo visits the Falcon, Star Wars Episode 7, The Force Awakens. When you were younger, did your parents own a car that you were very fond of even if it was a little banged up and rusted? Well, for Kylo Ren, that car is the goddamn Millennium Falcon. Ren, who is of course formerly Ben Solo, would have spent at least a portion of his youth running around this old junker and getting somehow jammed in the hyperdrive. We're not quite sure how that works. After his switch to the dark side, this errant youth is once again faced with his former, well, his dad's old ride, I guess, in a scene plucked from the waste bin of The Force Awakens. Ren and his snow troopers discover the Falcon after its uh, abrupt landing on Starkiller base. We would see him walking the halls before ending up in the cockpit where he whispers his father's name with pure venom in his voice. Considering what would happen between Ren and his father mere moments later, this scene would have been an excellent, quite frankly, emotional manipulation and set up what is one of the most shocking, shocking person getting out of their contracts that's ever happened in cinema. Also, it's kind of funny to think of a young Adam Driver running around the Millennium Falcon just drawing on the walls. Number one, Toshi Station, Star Wars Episode Four, A New Hope. The original cut of Star Wars, and this is before it got retitled to Episode Four, A New Hope, was edited by John Jimson and it was a mess. It was too long, it was badly paced, it was about as smooth as a piano taking a tumble down a set of stairs. George Lucas fired Jimson and replaced him with a new team of editors, including his then wife, Marcia. The end result was the version that is beloved by so many today, but it came at the cost of a veritable ton of unused footage. One such section took place on Tatooine toward the beginning of the film when Luke Skywalker was nothing but a young green farmhand. He is dispatched by his uncle to the most famous and least seen station in cinema, Toshi Station, to collect some power converters where he runs into his old friend, Biggs Darklighter. Biggs did make it into the final cut of the film, but in a vastly reduced role. Here, he and Luke discuss the Empire, how Biggs is signing up for the Rebel Alliance, and they even touch on the importance of the Force. Considering Biggs is killed in the assault on the Death Star later in the film, this feels like a mistake to have cut this crucial scene out of the early part of the film, which would have given more emotional weight to this character, and explain why Luke is so affected by his loss. Alas, that's what DVD extras are for.